Um, so up next we have Eric. And Eric is on the JIRA development team. He's also worked with Jay, our previous speaker, on a ton of those features that Jay covered because um, Eric had a wonderful comment on the Fusion team. So here, Jay's, oh, Jay, Eric is going to talk to us on what happens to a feature in an agile lifecycle development. Okay. Welcome, Eric. Hi. Is this the clicker? What? Yes, that's the clicker. Okay. Hi, uh, I'm Eric Dalglish. I've been uh, at Atlassian for about six and a half years, and I've been on the as Jira team lead for the last probably two. And before that, I was on the on-demand team, building what we now market as our cloud products. Uh, today, I'm going to be talking about three main things. First, an overview of agile development for people who aren't uh, necessarily familiar with it, and uh, how we develop software. Then, I'll be talking about I'll be going through a feature we developed, the uh, development tools panel, which I think uh, Jay talked about a bit last session. And finally, I'll just go through a few tips and tricks that we, that we found are useful. So I'll be touching on uh, JIRA, our issue tracker, HipChat, our uh, IM and group chat and video conversation tool. And I'll also be talking about Bamboo, our builds and deployment server, and uh, our various uh, source type dev tools, fisheye, stash, and bitbucket. So agile development is tied to the agile manifesto, uh, which was put together by a bunch of people in 2001. And those people were already practicing these principles. So they are kind of just writing down what they are doing. And we're still finding it useful these days. It exists to give guidance to teams on how to uh, develop code quickly and do it in a sustainable manner. It focuses on uh, working with the customer and also developing sustainably and yeah, those types of things. Uh, so typically what, uh, can I go back? Oh, that works. So this is the URL for Agile Manifesto and you can also Google it if you want. It's not very long, so if you haven't read it, uh, have a read, but maybe wait till after. Uh, typically, what uh, we do when we're developing is we'll start with a plan by getting the customer's uh, requirements, or often a PM will assemble that, a product manager will assemble those, and then we'll develop a few features and we'll then deliver, deliver those to customers uh, and then get more requirements or you know, work on the feedback that we get to come up with a new plan to go from there before we finish. On JIRA, uh, most of the teams use uh, Scrum, Scrum process, which involves teams getting, uh, committing to do a certain amount of work in an iteration. Usually that's two weeks, some teams use one week. Each team can define their own process, so teams that I'm on tend to end up using a Kanban, which is really good for ensuring you're working on the right thing at the right time, because uh, based on keeping work in progress uh, quite small. Whether or not uh, we're using Kanban or Scrum, people on the JIRA team still have a two-week line in the sand because every two weeks we cut a release of JIRA and we release that to our on-demand customers so that we can deliver value quickly and so that we can uh, get feedback from our customers regularly. Uh, because we deliver from master so frequently, we encourage everyone to develop on issue branches. That just means when you start an issue, you create a separate branch from master for that issue, and you do your development on that. Now, the nice thing about that is we can run, or run a set of our functional tests against that branch before we merge back to master. So this gives us assurance that we're not breaking anything on master, which uh, other people are relying on and lets us Let's just do that, which is good. Now, this, this screen is the uh, create branch screen in Stash. It uh, has a, a prefix there for the branch name, which we've set up for any new features that we create. And what that does is Bamboo uses that to uh, figure out which builds to uh, create special branch builds for. So then we're making sure that we're always covering a minimum set. And because this, we got to this screen from Jira, it's automatically filled in 
the issue key and the issue summary. A lot of people prefer to use this over creating branches from the command line because it just saves some human error. So once issues are uh, finished development and uh, we're up to doing some manual testing, we make sure that uh, developers are responsible for the quality of the stuff that they write. We don't have a separate uh, quality team which does testing or anything like that. All of that's supposed to be uh, the high the high risk stuff should be checked manually and everything that could regress should be covered by an automated test. So what we do have is a separate team of quality assisters whose job is to help the developers figure out how to test uh, most effectively and efficiently and even if testing is necessary at all. There's a separate talk on that I think tomorrow and so I won't be going into that any further. Once, the, once manual testing is done, we uh, put issues through a pull request to be merged back to master. So that's our general uh, process. Uh, now I'll walk through the evolution of the development tools panel, which is something that we developed last year to make our lives and our customers' developers' lives um, a bit easier. So that's it on the side there. Here's the zoomed in version, if you like. Now what we wanted to do was consolidate a lot of existing integrations into a summary here so that people can get a deep view of the true state of the issues, issue at a glance uh, right when the page loads without having to click through a bunch of tabs. Uh, each of these uh, lines can be clicked to open up a, uh, some more details on that particular piece of information. So that lets you still get at the detail view when you need to. Here's what the commits view used to look like. Uh, we have a source, source bar there, a source tab there, which lets people view any information from, from Stash or Fisheye. But if you wanted to see commits from Bitbucket, you had to go to the commits tab. And if you wanted to see reviews, you go to the reviews tab. If you wanted to see a pull request from Stash, you had to go to the reviews tab. But if you wanted to see a pull request from Bitbucket, it was over in the commits tab. And none of this made any sense. Bamboo builds were in the builds tab. And if you wanted to see Bamboo deployment information, it was a separate, tab, uh, separate panel entirely. So it was just very confusing. And if you wanted to figure out the exact state of where an issue was in development, you had to click in a bunch of uh, places. And you just usually ended up going and talking to someone. So that was what we wanted to solve. And here I'll, so each of those uh, links earlier opens up into its own uh, details tab. Here is an early mock-up of the commits information that we had. Uh, you'll notice there's a Bitbucket stash and fisheye tab at the top of there. So if your code is scattered among a few different places, it's, uh, you can still get to all of that. And there's review information in here and commit information. We ended up getting rid of the review information from here and putting it in its own separate details tab because uh, we wanted to show a bit more information than just it's in review. So we wanted, being agile, we wanted to make sure that what we were developing was the right thing. And we wanted to do that quickly. So what we did was we uh, added some analytics into our uh, existing, uh, our old integrations, which told us how often people uh, switch between the tabs. And what we were hoping was that that number would decrease a lot as people found the new summary information useful and uh, used the new details information. Now, we wanted to roll out different bits of functionality over time to different people and kind of get a feel about uh, what the changes from the normal would be for those. So uh, we, our on-demand system is divided into racks with uh, one to 2,000 customers on each rack. So for each of those racks, we, so for each feature, we chose a few racks and turned it on for them. But yeah, so that's what we did. And we had a look at the, the changes in behavior as we introduced new features to different groups of people. I just want to pause here for a second and talk about uh, analytics. It's a bit of a legal minefield. There are laws that are different between different countries. And uh, it's very easy to you know, step on your user's privacy, which is something that no one wants to do. So we spend a lot of time 
uh, making sure we're doing this both within our own ethical bounds and uh, also within legal requirements. Uh, the, the, my main point here is that if you're going to use analytics in your company, you should seek legal advice. So we, we gathered, um, we got that information out of the summary panel and we, uh, for the use of the summary panel, and we found that not everyone was using the new functionality. Some people were still using the old uh, functionality and we didn't really know why. So there was a uh, give feedback link in the, in the new panel. So we had a look at some data from that and we also conducted a few surveys and it turns out that people really valued being able to see the list of the changed files in the, in the information. So we added that back in and we, end, and we saw you know, a decent increase in the amount of people who stopped using the old stuff, which was good. And we ended up with, with the new commits view here. So it's much cleaner. We've taken the reviews information out and there's the ability to see the files on the right there. There's also no uh, fisheye view here because this particular project doesn't have any commits that are indexed by fisheye, so they're not showing up here. So that was uh, what we did for, that was the evolution of that, of that feature. So now I'll talk about just a few tips and tricks we found that help uh, keep our velocity high and our quality high. So the first one is uh, keeping activity visible. We, the first example here is, uh, if you remember, we encourage people to develop on an issue branch, uh, but sometimes people still need to commit to master. So we don't want to enforce uh, at stash level that we don't let people push changes to master. So what we do is we uh, just have something which names and shames if someone does that. So uh, Brendan here wanted, uh, needed to uh, investigate some tests on master for some reason. So this is the kind of situation where it's okay to put commit directly to master. But uh, in general, we don't want uh, people doing that, but we don't want to uh, force people not to. Uh, similarly for builds, we want to ensure that the visibility of the build to the appropriate team uh, is there. So people need to be aware of the builds that their team cares about. So we post, we have Bamboo, we have hip, Bamboo posting information into hip chat channels to uh, just keep the team up to date with the status. Uh, these two integrations we custom wrote for ourselves, but there are other, uh, there are some generic ones available on uh, confluence.alassian.com if you want to set it up for yourself. Uh, keeping test in shape provides assurance. We need one problem that we have with having, oh, sorry, every change goes through about 100 hours of uh, automated testing and within that we have uh, from time to time something's going to go wrong with your testing code and what happens with, that's a big problem is that if something becomes, uh, starts to fail intermittently, then we start to stop trusting our builds. We call these flaky tests. And when you stop trusting your builds, then they just become useless. It means that you have to do your own uh, manual testing or you have to ship uh, software which you're not even sure works. So we have to treat this as a, as a top priority. Another problem which comes about from, from this situation is that people will rerun builds before they merge, hoping that they turn green because hoping that their test is a flaky test, which is not a situation we want to be in. It slows development down a lot. So the trick that we, the best way that we've found to counteract this is every build has its owner and the owner's job isn't to uh, fix the build every time something goes wrong. The, uh, the owner's job is to, the owner's job is to uh, chase down the person who, uh, figure out who broke it and uh, get them to fix it. Uh, finishing features keeps velocity and quality high. So one, uh, obviously quality and development speed are quite important to us. So one thing uh, that we do is we need to make sure that we finish all our features properly to a decent quality level. So problems with features come about in two ways. One is uh, unfinished features show up as bugs or as engineering tasks. Now bugs represent use cases which we might not have uh, encountered, uh, thought about, or and engineering tasks represent uh, maybe shortcuts that we took or 
those types of things. So the point isn't that we have to fix all of these, but we have to evaluate all of them uh, to decide whether or not we want to fix them. Now, if we do want to fix them, it's quite important to get them done quickly so that we can uh, stop thinking about them, stop worrying about them. And if we don't want to fix them, then you know, we just close them as won't fix. Uh, the final thing that I want to talk about is uh, we found that breaking down work into manageable chunks is a great way for us to get through uh, work at a reasonable and predictable pace. So on uh, the team that I'm on at the moment, what we do is if an issue is taking longer than a day, then we aim to have all issues take a day or less. So if an issue is taking longer than a day, particularly in the development uh, column, we break it down into smaller issues. And this allows more predictability and it keeps uh, progress happening and visible to, visible to other stakeholders. Um, thank you for listening. And I think we might have some time for questions. Thanks, Eric. All right, so a first question is, how often do breaches roll from one sprint to the next, AKA missing the bi-weekly release to production? Uh, I'd say about half the time. All oh, right, <laughs> I'd say probably about half the time that happens on the JIRA team. Ideally, it would be zero. Um, sometimes we go for a few releases where uh, that, a few releases in a row where it doesn't go through and other times we'll uh, go through a whole bunch where they go through. What we've uh, recently started doing actually is choosing a known good state, uh, sometimes maybe a day early or a day after the designated time, and uh, just using that commit and anything which doesn't make it in has to wait for the next time around. So if a feature is tested independently, how do you keep quality high when releasing a lot of features in a single release? Right, yep. Uh, so part of the uh, QA process that we have is that the manual testing is supposed to uh, catch this. So if you have, so you sp the manual testing isn't just testing the feature that you're working on, it's testing all the features around it which could be affected by it. Now, of course, we don't always get every, every feature perfectly, and that's why we have to go back and fix things up. Uh, but a lot of that uh, integration, sorry, inter-feature testing happens at that manual stage, and that's what it's there to catch. Uh, the automated tests are for catching the specifics of the feature you're integrating, uh, you're developing. Next question. Can versions be used to track feature branches? Is there a better way to track production releases that are not pre-planned as a version? i.e. more of a, a more, well, more of a pure continuous integration model. Convert, so JIRA versions, I, I guess you mean. Um, so this isn't really something I've thought a lot about. Um, I guess you could just have a, you know, a released version of your code at, you know, version 1.0. 130, version 1.131. 1 uh, brand versions in JIRA, I probably wouldn't recommend that having a lot of versions just becomes a bit difficult to manage. Our last question, is okay. development of test automation required before releasing a feature to production? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so, that's usually something that we uh, check for in pull requests, uh, make sure that our test automation is there. Most changes will come with changes to a test as well because you're changing behavior, so you're going to need to either write a new test or update a test which was checking for the old behavior. Okay. Well, thanks, Eric.